Hello, and welcome to the Murder House Radio Show. I'm your host, X. On this show, we will be covering serial killers, killers, mass shooters, disappearances, true crime, and the most deplorable things and people in history. All that good dark stuff. The Murder House Radio Show will be a radio show slash podcast. I'll be uploading videos every Friday at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Once you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification and select all to get all notifications if you are viewing on YouTube. And hit follow if you are listening on a podcasting platform. So sit down, get comfortable, grab a cup of coffee or whatever your preferred beverage is, turn off the lights, and enjoy the show. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, for me, it's going pretty good. I hope it's going good for you too. Hope you had a good week and a good start to your month. When you, this is going up, it's going to be December 4th, I believe. 3rd or 4th. So the year is almost over. Time flies, huh? But uh, yeah, let me know how it's going down in the comments below and all that good stuff. Um... The tattoo shops where I am are finally opening up again so I can finish my uh, second sleeve. That'll be all good. I'll finally have both sleeves completed. Then it's on to some other part of my body. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Looking forward to that. But uh, anyways, if you wish to ask for some advice to be covered at the end of a podcast slash broadcast... The podcast email will be in the description, as well as the sources to today's video. So without any further ado, let's get in to today's episode. Today's episode is going to be on Henry Lee Lucas. He was born August 23rd, 1936, and he died March 12th, 2001. He was an American serial killer whose crimes span from 1960 to 1983. A 23-year run. He was convicted for murdering 11 people and he was sentenced to death for the murder of Deborah Jackson. Though his sentence was commuted to life in prison in 1998. Lucas rose to infamy after confessing to more than a hundred murders to the Texas Rangers and other law enforcement officials while he was incarcerated. He died of congestive heart failure in 2001. An investigation by the Dallas Times Herald newspaper later discredited many of Lucas's murder confessions and resulted in a follow-up investigation by the Texas Attorney General. The investigation concluded that Lucas was a pathological liar who had falsely confessed. Lucas did recant his confessions as a hoax. Lucas's case resulted in a reevaluation in police techniques and greater awareness of false confessions. Investigators did not consider that the petty privileges, steak dinners, milkshakes, television privileges granted by the confession interviews would prompt further confessions. Investigators also allowed Lucas to see case files to refresh his memory, giving him access to knowledge that normally only perpetrators would know. Yeah, that's kind of backwards giving them the case files so they know the information. That's just asking for a false confession. Also, giving them a whole bunch of privileges for interviews and confessions is like a reward for them to go confess to stuff. So they're going to want to do that as much as possible and squeeze as much of that out as possible before uh, they don't get any more. So, that is a rundown of who Henry Lee Lucas is, and we will delve into his early life right here soon. But first, I just want to say, P.
people tend to talk shit. And hey, this podcast isn't for everybody. So there's the door. You can kindly go fuck yourself on the way out if you don't like it. But if you do like it, I'm glad you do. And let's delve into his early life. Henry Lee Lucas was born in a one-room log cabin in Blacksburg, Virginia. He lost an eye when he was 10 years old after it became infected subsequent to a fight with his brother. A friend later described Lucas as a child who would often get attention by displaying frighteningly strange behavior. His mother, Viola, was a prostitute who would force her son to watch her engage in sex with clients. She would also make him cross-dress in public, and she would also pimp him out to men and women. Eventually, Lucas's school teachers complained about the cross-dressing, and a court order put an end to it. That's fucked up, pimping her own son out. And making him cross-dress. No wonder he turned into a serial killer. Holy. In December 1949, Lucas's alcoholic father, Anderson Lucas, died of hypothermia after going home drunk and collapsing outside during a blizzard. Shortly thereafter, while well, in the sixth grade, Lucas dropped out of school and ran away from home. Couldn't blame him. Drifting around Virginia, he claimed to have committed his first murder in 1951. If that is true, he would have been about 15. He uh, said he strangled 17-year-old Laura Burnsley after she refused his sexual advances. As with most of his confessions, Lucas later recanted this claim. On the 10th of June, 1954, Lucas was convicted on over a dozen counts of burglary in and around Richmond, Virginia, and was sentenced to four years prison time. He escaped in 1957 and was recaptured three days later and was subsequently released on the 2nd of September. 1959. Hmm. Usually when you escape from prison, they usually add about five years onto the sentence, so I guess that's a relatively new law, maybe? I'm not sure. But uh, let me know in the comments if you know anything about that. So, in about late 1959, Lucas traveled to uh, Michigan to live with his half-sister, Opal. Around this time, he was engaged to marry a pen pal with who he had uh, corresponded with while he was locked up. When Lucas's mother visited him for Christmas, she disapproved of her son's fiance and insisted he move back to Blacksburg to take care of her as she grew older. When he refused, they argued repeatedly. These arguments escalated until on the 11th of January, 1960, when according to Lucas, she struck him over the head with a broom, at which point he stabbed her in the neck. Lucas then fled the scene, and he subsequently said, All I remember was slapping her alongside the neck, but after I did that, I saw her fall and decided to grab her. But she fell to the floor, and I went back to pick her up. I realized she was dead. Then I noticed that I had my knife in my hand, and she had been cut. Holy, so one of his victims allegedly could very well be his mother. If he very well did kill her, that's some cold shit. Opal returned later and discovered their mother alive, but she was in a pool of her own blood. She called an ambulance, but it arrived too late. The police report stated that Lucas's mother died of a heart attack that was caused by the assault. Lucas was soon arrested in Ohio on an outstanding Michigan warrant. He claimed to have killed his mother in self-defense, but his claim was rejected, and he was sentenced to up to 40 years in prison for second-degree murder. After serving 10 years locked up. He was released on June 1970. 
due to prison overcrowding. Huh. So if they would have kept them in prison, they could have avoided a bunch more murders. That is uh, pretty wild if you think about it. There's a lot of cases like that where the killers get locked up for nearly murdering someone or murdering someone, but they get released. In 1971, Lucas was convicted of attempted kidnapping of three schoolgirls while serving a five-year sentence for the crime. He established a relationship with a family friend and single mother who had written to him. They married on his release in 1975, but he left the marriage two years later after his stepdaughter accused him of sexually abusing her. Lucas began moving between various relatives, one of whom got him a job in West Virginia where he established a relationship that ended when his girlfriend's family confronted him about another abuse allegation. If multiple people are uh, alleging abuse against you, especially sexual abuse, you probably did it. That's just fair to say. Lucas befriended Otis Toole and settled in Jacksonville, Florida. There, he lived with Tool's parents and became close to his adolescent niece, Frida Becky Powell, who had mild intellectual disability and had escaped from a juvenile detention center. A period of stability followed, with Lucas working as a roofer, fixing neighbors' cars, and scavenging scraps. Yeah, that's a red flag befriending an adolescent. Like, yeah, that's not good. That's not good at all. I get if you live with them or whatever, and this is before video games came into the play, but if you live with them, you're just known as that cool roommate, I guess, who just plays video games with them and shit. That's all good. There's nothing wrong with playing video games with a kid if you live with them or whatever. But that's just about it. You don't want the lines to get blurred or anything like that. You don't want to be too friendly. You just want to be that cool guy who plays video games with them. And that's all good. But anything much past that is a little sketchy. Is a little sketchy indeed. So, it says here that Powell was put in a state shelter by the authorities after her mother and grandmother died in 1982. Lucas convinced her to run away with him, and they lived on the road, eventually traveling to California, where an employer's wife asked them to work for her infirm mother, 82-year-old Kate Rich. However, Rich's family turned the couple out, accusing them of failing to do their jobs and writing checks on Rich's account. Hmm interesting stuff but uh yeah if you're running away with an underage person that is sus as well that's very sus that's just too far while hitchhiking lucas and powell were picked up by the minister of religious commune called the house of prayer located in stoneberg texas believing lucas and the 15 year old powell were a married couple, the minister found Lucas a job as a roofer while allowing the couple to stay in a small apartment on the commune. Why in the fuck would a 15-year-old be married to like a fucking 40-year-old? That's fucked up. But they can have arranged marriages, but that's fucked up because the parent would have to sign their kid away, basically. But anyway, Powell became argumentative and homesick for florida when she turned up absent lucas claimed that she had left at a truck stop in bowie texas in june 1983 lucas was arrested on charges of unlawful possession of a firearm by texas ranger fee ryan phil ryan later he confessed to the murder of powell and rich and led the police to their purported remains. Although forensic evidence alone was inconclusive, and the coroner stopped short of positively identifying either of them, 
Lucas's participation in the investigation would serve to boost his credibility in later confessions to other crimes. Lucas later denied involvement, but the consensus agrees he did murder Powell and Rich. Yo, so there's two murders under his belt right now, allegedly, and then the attempted murder of his mother. Why is he still free? Ask yourself that. Like, that makes no sense whatsoever. So, uh, Lucas did have a false confession spree, as I mentioned earlier. So it says here in November 1983, Lucas was transferred to a jail in Williams County, Texas. He reported that he attempted suicide after receiving rough treatment by inmates and claimed that police stripped him naked, denied him cigarettes and bedding, held him in a cold cell, tortured his genitalia, and did not allow him to contact an attorney. In interviews with law enforcement personnel, Lucas confessed to numerous additional unsolved killings. It was thought that there was positive cooperation with Lucas's confessions in 28 unsolved murders, and so the Lucas Task Force was established by James B. Adams, the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety. So... He confessed to over a hundred murders, I said earlier, but I think he has an official count of two with one count of attempted murder, and that being for trying to kill his mother. So, uh, it's hard to say how many kills this dude actually has, but, um, the Lucas Task Force officially cleared... 213 previously unsolved murders as the result of Lucas's confessions. Lucas received preferential treatment rarely offered to convicts, being frequently taken to restaurants and cafes for his participation. He was rarely handcuffed, often allowed to wander police stations and jails at will, and even knew codes for security doors. Yo, these cops were hurting bad for uh, solving these cases. Holy, they uh, were fucking around a little bit. I won't say they fucked dog, but they were fucking around a little bit. Like, how are you going to let him know codes for uh, doors in your police station and let him wander around and stuff? Like, I can see them bringing him food in like an interrogation room. But bringing him to restaurants and cafes and letting him wander around the station, that's not very good, bro. So, later attempts at determining Lucas's involvement in his confessed crimes were complicated. When it was discovered, he was given access to information on the files of cases he was confessing to. Now, that makes sense. You know how you have to do it? Here's how I do it, right? You give him pictures of victims or whatever, living and dead, and then you'd be like, so did you kill this person? Give him the name even, and be like, okay, so uh, where did you do it, and where did you leave the body? But you don't tell him anything, just ask him all these questions. Don't even guide him, and if he answers them right, shit, maybe he did it. But if not, he didn't do it. But anyway, there were suggestions that the interview tapes showed that Lucas would read the reactions of those interviewing him and would alter what he was saying, thereby making his confession more consistent with facts known to law enforcement. Yeah, cops also do that too when they want you to confess. You know, they'll be like, okay, so what happened? Blah, 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 blah. You tell them what happened? And they'll be like, are you sure? Or did he look like that kind of deal? And they'll just alter what they say, and it's a coerced confession. But it was uh, kind of the other way around. They were uh, fucking saying some stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, man, that's right, that's right, or whatever. And Because uh, he probably didn't know anything. But, um, yeah, the cops are just fucking around hard. But um, the most serious allegation against the Lucas Task Force is that they had to let Lucas read case files 
on the unsolved crimes and thus enabled him to come up with convincingly detailed confessions which made it virtually impossible to determine if he had been telling the truth about a relatively no large number of the murders. Oh yeah, indeed, indeed. In 1983, Lucas claimed to have killed an unidentified young woman, later identified as Michelle Busha, along Interstate 90 in Minnesota. When questioned by police, he gave inconsistent details on the way he murdered the victim and was eliminated as a suspect. In 1984, he confessed to the murder of an unidentified girl, referring to the time as Caledonia Jane Doe, who was discovered shot dead in a field in Caledonia, New York, on November 10th, 1979. Investigators, however, found insufficient evidence to support Lucas's confession, and in early 2015, over 35 years later, Caledonia Jane Doe was identified through DNA match as Tammy Alexander. Lucas is also believed to have falsely confessed to the 1980 slaying of Carl Cole in Louisiana. Cole was also unidentified until 2015. So, uh, yeah, hate to say, but I have no clue how many murders this guy did. Nobody really does. He could have only done the two, allegedly, even still. But he could have also done way more. I think he may have done way more, but there's a lot of bullshit to sort through. So, uh, let me know what you guys think. You think this guy killed a lot more people than uh, we think? Or do you think he's just full of shit? But this section is called Discredited. And it says, Journalist Hugh Hainsworth and other investigated the fericity of Lucas's claims for articles that appeared in Dallas Times Herald. They calculated that Lucas would have had to use his 13-year-old Ford station wagon to cover 11,000 miles, which is 17,700 kilometers, in one month to have committed the crimes police attributed to him. Holy. After the story appeared in April 1985, and revealed the flawed methods of the Lucas's task force, law enforcement's opinion began to turn against their claims that the crimes had been solved. The bulk of the Lucas's report was devoted to a detailed timeline of Lucas's claimed murders. The report compared his claims to reliable, verifiable sources for his whereabouts, the results often contradicted his confessions and thus cast doubt on most of the crimes in which he was implicated. Texas Attorney General Jim Maddox wrote that when Lucas was confessing to hundreds of murders, those with custody of Lucas did nothing to bring an end to this hoax. And we found information that would lead us to believe that some officials cleared cases just to get them off the books. Makes sense. That makes sense. But, uh, yes. Lucas remained convicted of 11 homicides. Okay, so that's how many he was convicted of. He had been sentenced to death for one, and then an unidentified woman dubbed as orange socks whose body was found in williams county on halloween 1979 despite a timesheet recording his presence at work in jacksonville florida on that day okay lucas was granted a stay on his death sentence after it was discovered that details in his confession came from the case file which he had been given to read the sentence was commuted to life imprisonment in 1998. By then, Governor George W. Bush, in 2019, Orange Sox was officially identified as Deborah Jackson, 
who is aged 23 at the time of her death. So there is that. I wonder how he killed his victims that he did kill. Hell, even if he killed anybody, but I still think he may have only killed the two. Anyway, when he died on March 12, 2001, at 11 p.m., Lucas was found dead in his prison cell from congestive heart failure, which is heart failure, also known as congestive heart failure, CHF, is a uh, cardiac arrest, like your heart stops, basically. But, um is when the heart is unable to pump sufficiently to maintain blood flow to meet the body tissues needed to uh, live. So that's what that is. So his heart basically just uh, stopped. At age 64, he was 64 when he died, he is buried at Captain Joe Byard Cemetery in Huntsville, Texas. And as of 2012, his grave is unmarked Due to vandalism and theft. Interesting. So there are different opinions on this case. But it says that his credibility was damaged by his lack of precision. He initially admitted to having killed 60 people. A number he raised to over 100 victims which police accepted. And then to a figure of 3,000 that led him to not being taken seriously obviously. However, he remained publicized as America's most prolific serial killer, despite denials such as fatally stating, I am not a serial killer, in a letter to author Shaldi. Yeah, if you confess to 3,000 murders, you're capping, or you're like fucking the Joker or some shit. But, you know, if, there were th if you killed 3,000 people... You're on some, like, war crime type of shit right there. But, um, yeah. Could you imagine if he actually did kill 3,000 people, though? Like, the police would be on him, like, white on rice on a white paper plate in the middle of a snowstorm being carried by an albino, bro. They'd be all over him. Some people believe that Lucas was responsible for a massive number of killings, nonetheless. Eric W. Hicks cites an unnamed investigator who interviewed Lucas several times and concluded that he helped probably kill about 40 people. Such assertions were given little credence with lawmen involved refusing to corroborate these claims an experienced Texas Ranger whom Ryan's team allowed access to Lucas said that although it was obvious to him that Lucas often lied, there was an instance where he demonstrated guilty knowledge. But the cop or reporter said that I remember him trying to cop to one he didn't do, but there was another murder case where I'll kiss your butt if he didn't lead us. Right to the deer stand where the murder took place. Ain't no way he could have guessed that. And I'm damn sure I didn't tell him. I think he did that one. Other rangers had similar experiences with Lucas. So, he definitely murdered a few people. But the question is, how many? But it says here, DNA evidence has verified that Lucas did not kill 20 of his supposed victims. But that's 20 out of um 60 that he uh, f originally confessed to. So he could have killed 40 people. So let's just say his body count could be suspected of killing 40 people. So I watched a documentary on this dude as well to find any further knowledge. And it seemed he didn't discriminate in his victims. Men, women, children, they all were not uh, uneligible for his wrath, I guess you could say. And also his um murder, um, the way he killed them. He would uh, shoot them, beat them, stab them. He would just do whatever he had to do to kill them. If he did indeed kill more than the two people. But um, 
Yeah, so I guess that's how he uh, took care of his business, I guess you could say. But uh, yeah, there's not uh, all that much on him because they don't know how many people he actually killed because of all his uh, bullshit and lying and false confessions and whatnot. So uh, yeah, there is that. So let me know. If you know anything more about him, hell, even if you knew the guy, you never know. The world's a big place. <laughs> but uh, let me know down in the comments below and all that good stuff. But I think I'm going to wrap it up here. So that is Henry Lee Lucas. Thank you for listening to this episode on the Murder House Radio Show. I hope you have a good rest of your Friday or whenever you are listening to this. Check out the social medias and the sources in the description below. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Once you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, notification, and select all to get all notifications if you're listening on YouTube. If you are listening on a podcasting platform, hit follow. Leave your suggestions for future episodes in the comments. See you next episode. This is your host, X. Signing off.